In this tutorial, I'm going to be covering how to use a predefined pen table. Some organizations will have pre made pen tables they will want you to use with each drawing. And you may or may not like the pen tables, but regardless, we're going to have to use them because that's what, say, your company project manager wants you to use. This section will cover how to add the pen table to your drawing. And then afterwards, we're going to talk a little bit about how to set the line weights using the pen tables. So the first step in the process is to obtain a copy of your company's pen tables. So I actually do have that here somewhere on my hard drive. I'm just going to navigate out to where that's located at. And in this particular example, I have it here in my NCS folder. So this is something that I downloaded from my company server. So I have two particular pen tables. One is called NCS underscore one, which is the one that my company wants to use with this particular drawing. And then the other one is for Land FX. And since I'm not using Land FX, I'm not too concerned about the Land FX pen tables. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open another Explorer window. I'm just going to right click down here and select Windows Explorer. And right now I just opened it on my other screen, so I'm just going to drag that over here. And what I'm going to do is press the Windows key and the right arrow on my keyboard to make that window go to the right. And then on the right side, so on the left side I have my source file where I'm going to copy and on the right side is where I'm going to paste to. So I usually always do that when doing file management so I don't accidentally copy or paste or delete the wrong things. So on the left side is my source. This is my pen tables that I'm going to want to copy. And on the right side is where I'm going to put it to. And the keyboard shortcut to get your windows to line up like this is just by simply pressing, selecting the window that you want to align and then press the windows and left keyboard key. And that will make it line up to the left. And if you want it to line up to the right, then you press, select the window that you want to line up to the right, and then press the windows and the right arrow key. All right, so I'm going to go to computer, and I'm going to go to the C drive. And then I'm going to go down to users. One thing I do want to mention is that you will need your hidden files and folders turned on. So if you don't have those turned on, let me go back up to computer. You'll need to go over here where it says Organize, and then click on the Folder and Search Options. Click on the View tab, and what I usually do is check in all of these up here. And some people prefer to have thumbnails instead of icons. And the reason why that I have this checked in, because I don't particularly like the little thumbnails.db little files that run around all over the place, and by having this checked in, that doesn't get created. And then down here, I want to make sure that I can see my hidden files and folders and drives. And then I uncheck these three hides. And by default, I think that these are all three of these are checked in. This prevents um, people who don't know what they're doing from accidentally deleting important files or changing the extensions of these. Once you're done, go ahead and click OK. And then we can navigate into the C drive and we'll be looking for a folder called users and then inside users you're going to be looking for the folder that is named after your username so in my case my username is Jade and I have two Jades in here and this one happens to be for my local login and this one happens to be for my domain login and since I'm doing this in my domain login this is the one that I want to use in some cases, you may not have a domain login. You may only have one. And if you only have one, then that's the one that, that it has to be. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on this one since I know it's, th it's that one. And then inside here, I'm going to be looking for app data. And app data is a hidden folder. So if you don't have hidden files and folders turned on, you're not going to be able to see app data. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on app data. And inside app data, I'm going to be looking for roaming. And then inside of roaming, I'm going to be looking for Autodesk. I know this is a very long directory path. 
Inside Autodesk, I'm going to be looking for my current install of Civil 3D. In this case, it is C3D 2013. And then inside of that, I'm going to be looking for something called ENU. It's the only folder in here. And then I'm going to be looking for plotters inside of that. And then inside of that, I'll be looking for plot styles. It will eventually end, and it ends here. So these are all of the default plot styles that has come with Civil 3D. So we're going to be adding our own. We're going to be adding this NCS underscore one dot CTV. I'm just going to copy and paste it here. And what I did was I just clicked on this, that way I have it selected, and then press and hold down the right mouse button and drag it over here, and then release the mouse button, and then choose copy here. And I always do it that way because sometimes when you drag and drop something, it doesn't actually copy the, the file over there. It just creates a shortcut. And by right-clicking and dragging it over here, I get the option if I want to copy here, move here, or create a shortcut there. So now I have my NCS underscore one dot CTV where I need it to be. So the next thing that I need to do is go into my Civil 3D drawing that I plan to use this in. And what I'm going to do is turn on my, my layout tabs. I don't have my layout tabs turned on. And I can do that by right clicking here and selecting display layout and model tabs. And I'm going to go to my L2.4 details because this is where I want to apply that particular pen table to. So I'm going to right click on L2.4 details. I'm going to choose page setup manager. And I'm going to make sure that L2.4 details is selected here. And then I'm going to click on the modify button which pulls up this old familiar sheet here that we're all pretty familiar with. So right now it's going to be printing to a PDF and that's what I want. And then over here it says plot style table pen assignments. So over here in the upper right corner I'm going to click on this drop down menu and I should see NCS underscore one dot CTB. Now if you don't see it in this list, it simply means that it cannot find it. And if it cannot find it, you might have pasted it under the wrong username and you just have to try again. And another thing that it may not be refreshing here, and if it doesn't, you may have to click cancel and then try re-navigating back to this page setup. If that doesn't work, then I would probably try restarting the Civil 3D program and that will try to force Civil 3D to re-look at the directories. Alright, so I'm going to put choose the NCS underscore one dot CTV. I want to make sure that display plot styles is checked in. And then everything here looks pretty good. I've got this set to one inch equals one foot. I've got all of these other things set correctly. Layout, Adobe PDF. Um, one other thing I probably want to do is I'm going to go in here to properties and go to custom properties. I'm going to go to paper slash quality and I want this to be black and white because when, you know, when we print it that's what it's going to end up looking like. I'm going to click OK to that and then as soon as I do that I notice that all of these other settings end up getting changed. So I'm going to go back in here and choose RHD again. Make sure this is set to layout, this is inches, all of these are set to zero. Over here should be one inch equals one foot. This should be set to one and one, and that should be set to inches. This should still be unchecked. Landscape, um, plot object line weights, plot with plot styles, plot paper source last, paper space last, sorry. This should be set to normal and display plot style. So all of this looks good. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK and then click close. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here to my application button. I'm going to choose print. And I'm just going to do a print preview. So I'm going to choose plot preview. And this is what it currently looks like. So I want to zoom in here and just study this a little bit. So since this is a detail of a retaining wall, the first thing that we should, that should just really stand out 
should pop out at us is the retaining wall, or at least the boundaries of that retaining wall. And right now, where our eyes tend to focus on is all of the material patterns and maybe this pipe here, since this is a pretty bold line there, and maybe the rebar. So we're just going to kind of play with the line weights a little bit next to get this to read as a retaining wall detail. 